The goal that is set out at the start of Whole Cake Island is to break into the territory of one of the Emperors of the Sea and steal back Sanji, and they intend to do so with just half the crew. Essentially, it's a suicide mission. We quickly realize that our heroes have vastly underestimated the level of an Emperor's forces. Throughout the arc, it is repeatedly hammered in just how overwhelming the odds are that the Straw Hats are up against, and that they have bitten off far more than they can chew. So how do you write an arc where the crew wanders into a ridiculously high level area that they have no business being in, where they are way out of their depth, but still believably have the heroes survive and escape? Well, a lot of readers would argue that Oda didn't do that successfully, and I'll address some issues I had as well later this video, but I think it's overlooked how carefully Oda prepared for this arc. Basically, to have the Straw Hats survive Whole Cake Island, Oda realized he needed to plant many get-out-of-jail-free cards in advance. To begin with, in chapter 489, Nami is given a Vivre card which we are told belongs to Lola's mom, who is a great pirate. In chapter 836, Luffy and Nami seem to be trapped in the seducing woods, an area where each rookie before them has failed. However, the Vivre card that was planted over 300 chapters ago comes into play as a literal get out of jail free card. It is revealed to be Big Mom's Vivre card, allowing Nami to manipulate the homies of the forest and turn King Bomb into their personal escort. In Fishman Island, we had two setups. First, it is established that Jinbei is currently in service of Big Mom, but he will be going to break ties with her soon. This ensures that the Straw Hats will have an inside man when they ultimately come to her territory. When the Straw Hats are inevitably overpowered and caught the first time this arc, Oda had already planted Jinbei as another get out of jail free card in advance. In Fishman Island, we also had a second, very elaborate setup. We learned of the legendary Tamate Bako box and are shown the dangerous powers it grants people throughout the arc, so that by the end of the arc, it makes sense that the box needed to be rigged to ensure that its powers can never be stolen again. It makes sense for explosives to be planted, it makes sense for the box to be transferred to Big Mom as part of the deal she makes with Luffy, and it makes sense that such a legendary treasure would be saved as a prize for the wedding. And so the second time that the Straw Hats are overpowered and caught, we have another get out of jail free card come into play. In Zo, we are given repeated hints that the minks have an ace up their sleeve, and that it is directly tied to a full moon. Whole Cake Island's climax takes place during a full moon, so when the Straw Hats are in danger of getting trapped by a fleet of ships, Oda is able to play the mink transformation card he had been saving, and have them evade capture yet again. Even cover stories come into play, as Oda makes Wadatsumi into an ally during Jinbei's cover story. As it turns out, Wadatsumi is the final get out of jail card of the arc. The crew has no way to escape from the surrounding fleets until the gigantic fishman stores the sunny in his mouth and escapes underwater. Now, Oda may have gone a little overboard in trying to create as many near death scenarios as possible. While I think this was balanced by the fact that there were deaths in this arc, some scenes still didn't sit right with me. The way the tidal wave scenario was built up as certain doom feels like there should have been a solution planted beforehand for the situation, but instead we got a sudden reveal that Jinbei can surf waves with a ship. Similarly, while I have no problem with the idea of using Wadatsumi to carry the ship underwater, we shouldn't have been misled to believe it was the Sunny that was burning in the first place, and the whole ship swapping aspect felt a little cheap. But while Oda didn't execute every situation perfectly, overall he planned Whole Cake Island very well. By setting up a lot of variables and loose ends in advance, he was able to regularly create situations where it seemed like the protagonists are completely finished, but something that was planted hundreds of chapters ago makes for a viable solution. If you enjoyed this video, then please like, share, and subscribe.